Terra Incognita. Those two words inspire the imagination. They evoke images from mysterious old maps of unmarked territory and lands marked with here-be monsters. I'm exploring some uncharted territory of my own in this new series from Orbit. I'm Kevin J. Anderson and I want to tell you about Terra Incognita in the first volume, The Edge of the World. It's a story set similar to our Age of Discovery. It's a fantasy world, but it also has sailing ships and sea monsters and nautical legends which may or may not be real, as well as some magic that works. But it's mainly a mainstream historical novel, a sailing ship adventure, and also a story of the Crusades. I've wanted to write this novel ever since I first learned of the great legend in our Earth of Prester John. Prester John was supposedly the king of a mythical Christian, Christian kingdom on the other side of the world that the people in Europe just hadn't discovered yet. Prester John had all kinds of wonders in his land, including the Holy Grail and the Fountain of Youth and, and uh, crystalline thrones and things. But what was interesting about Prester John was during the time of the Crusades and when the Moors were sweeping up through Africa and across Portugal and Spain and into Europe, the Christian kings were trying to find another ally so that they could fight against their enemies. That's one of the reasons why Prince Henry the Navigator sent out his great voyages of discovery, Vasco da Gama and Bartolomeo Diaz, um, even uh, leading up to Christopher Columbus, sailing around darkest Africa looking for the kingdom of Pre Prester John so that they could bring him together and they could clash with their rival religion. I use that as a springboard for building a fantasy story set in my own original world, which has two continents connected together, one that's like Europe and one that's like Arabia, and they're connected by a thin isthmus, and on the center of that isthmus is built a big city that's holy to both of them. It's called Ishalem, and it contains the site of the formation of their two rival religions. But at the very beginning, right when they're signing a peace treaty, the, the religious leaders and the kings of, of both continents, um, a fire breaks out and the city burns down and both sides blame each other and a great bloody crusade starts. Um, this is the foundation for the story with all kinds of characters and, and vast lands and exploring different things. And one of the, the inspirations for the kings of both religions is that they want to go find the land which is equivalent to Prester John's and they want to bring him as an ally back to their great and bloody war. Um, with my track record, I'm best known for writing giant science fiction epics from um, my saga of Seven Sons, which just wrapped up its seventh and final volume, uh, to my numerous Star Wars books that have sold millions of copies, as well as all of the uh, Dune novels that Brian Herbert and I write. But when you think about it, Seven Sons and Star Wars and Dune, they may be science fiction on the outside, but they really are mythical fantasies at their core. And I'm using that as the basis for telling the same story with um, all the characters, politics, adventures, strange lands, strange creatures. This time they just happen to be sea serpents instead of alien monsters. And I'm building my own tale in Terra Incognita. And it's one of the most ambitious, one of the most passionate, one of the most um, complex things that I've ever done. I think I've put more emotion into this book than I've ever uh, written before. Um, I think that this really matches the things that my readers will like, and I hope that you'll like it too. Except in this case, instead of being science fiction, when my characters boldly go where no one has gone before, they go off in sailing ships across the ocean instead of across space. So the first novel is The Edge of the World. It's finished, and I hope you'll get a chance to read it. And thanks for listening to my video.